Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and Assalamu alaikum dear students welcome to our next lecture in today's lecture we will look at a technique known as principal component analysis in this technique basically we try to reduce the number of dimensions given in our data set to some lower level so that our computation can be faster so that the complexity of the model that we design for the machine learning that becomes more simpler and to increase the interpretability of the model that we design that is the objective of this theorem this algorithm the principal component analysis also known as pca for this we need to know little bit about the linear algebra that linear algebra is described here first of all we look at something which is called the projection methods or the projection thing what is a projection we have already studied it in our previous classes let i explain it here with the help of few examples for example if we have a unit vector u that is shown in the red arrow with the red arrow we can project it onto an other vector that is shown with green this u is projected on v and the part that of v which correspond to the projection of u is known as projection of u and represented with green arrow and green line similarly there is another example where we have a vector a which is projected on vector b right and the part the shadow of a on b is known as the projection of a on b so this is on one dimension for example uh, two dimension this is in two dimension and here if we take the case of three dimension the projections look like this we have z axis we have x axis we have y axis and if we project this 3d this uh, black vector v which is given in three dimensions if we project it to two dimensions then we can see that it is given this like this uh, on this plane right from space to plane we project this vector and here you can see that now instead of 3d this vector is represented in this rectangle of 2d right so this is the idea behind the projection right it means that for example v is represented with the help of x y and z in space we can represent it with the help of three coordinates x y and z however if it is projected in two dimension we can represent it the projected vector which is known as w with the help of two coordinates x and y if we are successful in this projection it means that we have reduced the complexity of our data of our vector okay so this was the concept taken from this uh, figures however in a layman language we say that let's say if we have some value x and y and z and however by using any method we can represent it with the help of two values let u and v only it mean that we have reduced the dimension of the data and we have projected x y z into u v so keep this in mind if the concept is not clear at this stage in later slides you will get it uh, very much explained a projection is a mapping of one set of values to another set of values right a projection is a mapping of a set or other mathematical structure into a subset or substructure substructure this is the understanding whether we take it as the set of values or as a structure and substructure right the concept is very much clear from this figure because you can see that from a structure of 3d we are going to convert it 
we are going to map it into a substructure of two dimensions. Projection methods help us to find a mapping from the d dimension inputs to new k dimension. k dimensional space outputs with minimum information loss. Right. So, basically we have k the number of features which is less than d. So, we project d into small number of features with the minimum loss. So, remember this point. The projection of x on the direction of w is given as w t x and it is a very simple kind of formula. Let me explain this formula on the coming slide. You do not need to get feared from this formula, it is very simple. Here look at that. If we have this equation which is given as w4, x4, w3, x3, w2, x2, w1, x1, right? We can write this formula as w transpose x and that is noted by a single variable which is known as z. How this transpose comes in our calculation or computation? Look at this. We can represent the w vector as a one column vector that is given as this w4, w3, w2, w1 and similarly we can represent x as a one column vector given as x. And this w vector when the transpose is taken it is represented like this and we take x as it is. Now, if we have the dot product of this or we multiply these two vectors, this the transpose of w and the original x, we get this equation back, finally we get this. It means that this term is not something that can frighten us, we do not need to get afraid of it. It is a simple multiplication and summation. Right? If you have this concept very much clear in your mind, it would make our further learning easy. The Euclidean norm. We have also worked with the Euclidean norm previously in even in class 8, 9, 10 and first year, second year. It is also called a Euclidean length that measures the length of the vector, right? a formula that we use to measure the length of a vector that is called Euclidean length or Euclidean norm. The Euclidean formula for n dimension is given as this is mean the mean of this term is Euclidean norm right that is given as p 1 square plus p 2 square up to p n square and whole under root right and we can express this formula with the help of this short notation. Right? If we have n d space, so we can write the Euclidean length with the help of this short notation which is given as p t p. Now, just as an exercise, you are required to write p on your paper, then take its transpose and multiply it with p and see what the results comes up. Now, we look at an example of this. In one dimension, a point is represented with one value and that is the magnitude of it too. Right? For example, if we have look at this, if we have one dimension data and we want from here, we draw a vector from here to here, right? the magnitude of this vector is just given by the numbers which are given over here and it is 4. If we take an other vector, uh, let us say that that goes from uh, 0 to 5, its magnitude is given by its length which is 5 and so on. In two dimension, a point is represented with two points and its magnitude is given by this norm, Euclidean norm, right. For example, if we have a point this 4, 3, on x axis it is 4, on y axis it is 3, so the length of this vector could be calculated with the help of this formula that is 4 square plus 3 square which comes up 5. So, the length of this vector would be one quantity and that would be 5. Similarly, 
for a 3D point, we can calculate the length, the magnitude of the vector with the help of points that we have. In our example, let we have this point, which is expressed with the help of three coordinates, x, y, and z, and x is 2, y is 3, z is 5. So, we can find out the length of this vector from the origin using this Euclidean norm formula which results in 6.16 right and here the thing that I have asked you to work out that is explained or given on this point. Let P is 2, 3, 5 then P T is equal to we can write this thing which is a transpose and this is the vector which is multiplied with itself. So, we have basically this is P T P right the result is this 38 right and then we can apply a Euclidean norm on it right we can take the square square root of it which would be 6.16. So, from this discussion I am sure that you have got the idea what is Euclidean norm and how we use this Euclidean norm to find the distance of a point in 1D, 2D, 3D, 4D and even ND. Now, we look at two more concepts known as eigenvector and eigenvalue and again I just remind you people that you have already studied it in your uh, linear algebra classes in class 9, 10 or uh, first year, second year you may have studied it. Let x t the transpose of some vector is given as 2, 20, 60 and 80. On the previous slide we have seen that what is x and how its transpose is taken. So, this is the transpose of the vector and it is linearly transformed as y transpose is equal to 1, 3, 4 right. Then how we transform it onto this these numbers. If it could only be transformed if there is some scalar value lambda such that x is equal to lambda y, then lambda is known as the eigenvalue. So, it is very simple. For example, here you can see that if I multiply it with 20, right. So, this would become the original vector x, right. So, this 20 is now known as the eigenvalue. If I multiply 20 with this vector and it produces the original vector, then this number is known as eigenvalue. So, there is no need to worry about eigenvalue, it is a very simple concept. Let us suppose that for an n cross n matrix A, if we can write something like this, what does that mean? It means that we multiply the matrix A with some vector x which becomes equal to some constant number when it is multiplied with the same vector. Then x is known as eigenvector. How is that? Let we see on this case. Let us assume that we have a vector a that is 1, 1, minus 2 and 4. Then we find a matrix x that fulfills the condition. Which condition? This condition basically, right. So, we have just 1, minus 2, 1, 4, this is the vector that we have. We multiply it with 6 and 6, it becomes 12 and 12. 1 is multiplied by 6 plus this one is multiplied by 6, that is 12 and this minus 2 is multiplied with, by, with this 6, mean minus 12. This 4 is multiplied by 6, mean 24 of plus of uh, positive sign and after solving them, we get this final result. Now, we can transform this like this, we can write this column vector like this, 2 that we can take outside which if multiplied with these numbers it would results back in 12, 12 values and 2, 6 into 6 right. Now, if this is A, this is X, this is lambda and this is X again. So, we can see that we have transformed a matrix A right into these two values 
right? The first value is known as the eigenvalue and the second value is known as the eigenvector. So, x is eigenvector. I hope the concept of eigenvalues and eigenvectors is very much clear to you people, right? And the use of this is very much uh, clear. Just we give example with the help of this figure taken from internet. So, if we have this picture and we map it on some eigenvector which is in different direction instead of in pure vertical direction. So, we can transform the image in uh, some, we can produce an image in some transformed way. We need some little bit more linear algebra, right, which is A multiplied by A transpose and A transpose multiplied by A share the same non-zero eigenvalues. Right. Remember this point. Right. It means that the eigenvalues of A transpose A and A A transpose are same. The eigenvalues of A A transpose and A transpose A are non-negative numbers. Mean they are the positive numbers. Another concept that we need to know that is the rank of the matrix, which is given as R cross C where R is the number of rows and C is the number of columns. And a final concept that we need to know is if A is a matrix which is singular, singular mean that its determinant, determinant is 0 for a matrix A, A determinant is 0. What does that mean? It means that if the determinant of a matrix is 0, that matrix is called as the singular matrix. Now, we look at some statistics that we need to understand this algorithm. We know about these formulas. I just explained for your ease. Mayo, the mean of feature i or variable i right over the population that is given as if that variable is x represented with x i. So, its mean is represented as x i bar and it is given as we will add up all the values of feature x i and we will take, we will divide it with n. So, we will get the average or the expected value for that variable. And then the next thing is covariance. Covariance of two matrices x i and x j is given as summation x i minus its mean value, x j minus its mean value and we will do this for all the rows divided by n, mean for all the values of x i. Because for example, uh, here I say that i i goes in this direction, right? Uh, i 1, i 2, i 3, i 4, right? And then we have the first record right, which have uh, for this x 1, basically this is x 1. So, x 1 it has some value for second record we will have some value for third record we will have some value so what we will do we will add them up all and we will divide with the number for example here is the number 3 so this will give us the average value of this feature right and using these statistics we can find out the covariance and from here just visualize that is it difficult to implement this formula in uh, the language of your choice, for example, Python, right? It is not a difficult thing, it is easy, so you can easily implement being a graduate student. Where x i and x j are the means of the features i and j. Variance is given using the same formula, however, i and j are equal in that case, so we will put here i, here i, again here i and i. So, you can see that j is replaced with i and these both terms are same, then these are multiplied with each other giving us the square of the expression and which are further divided by the n, it gives us the variance of that particular feature of our data. Let if x is a two dimensional, then its covariance matrix is given as this. 
this is variance of 1 multiply variance of 2 ठीक है here you can see that this is variance of 1 and uh, for example this is variance of 2 right variance of 1 and variance of 2 variance of 2 variance of 1 variance of 2 variance of 2 so just try to understand can you calculate this matrix in a, your programming language yes you can calculate and you should be able to calculate it right this covariance matrix this basically or this basically is represented with the help of summation sign so whenever you look at the summation sign don't need to worry because you know that these are the numbers that we can calculate using this formula z is given as this we should know about it variance of z could be given with the help of this formula now you don't need to worry about how uh, this sigma has come up right variance of z could be given as w transpose into sigma into w right and this could be written as this w transpose we can write it like this right this sigma which is the covariance matrix could be written as this because we have derived it here and the w without transpose in original shape could be written as this if you have these statistics you can easily kind uh, find the variance of z again look at every formula from the programming perspective right and as an exercise you must implement them in the language of your choice we seek w such that variance of z is maximized subject to the constraint that w transpose w is equal to 1 right if we put this constraint that w transpose into w if it becomes equal to 1 then we try to find the value of w in such a way that it maximizes the variance remember this point now we have seen the required linear algebra the mathematics we have also seen the required statistics for understand for the understanding of this uh, then we look at the principal component analysis itself what is a principal component analysis pca can be considered as a mapping a p dimensional ellipsoid look at this this is a three dimensional ellipsoid so if we have p features so we will have p dimensional ellipsoid to the data where each axis of ellipsoids represents the principal component right this is a principal component this is a principal component and this is a principal component so if we have three dimensional data we will have three principal components the process these are the five steps that we have to study and we have to understand for the understanding of principal component analysis number one normalize the data the data with that we have been given normalize it number two find covariance matrix number three find eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the covariance matrix number four each of the mutually orthogonal unit eigenvectors are interpreted as an axis of the ellipsoid right and it will transform the covariance matrix to diagonalized form how that would be transformed i let you later let you know later on the diagonal element represent the variance of each axis right by dividing the each eigenvalue by the sum of all eigenvalues proportion of the variance that each eigenvector represents can be obtained so remember these five points we are going to explain them and implement them right here uh, normalization of data is uh, we have to find the mean and we have to subtract the mean from the data and divide it with the standard deviation so it would be normalized then we will find a covariance matrix that is given like this find eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the covariance matrix each of the mutually orthogonal unit vectors are interpreted as the axis of ellipsoid right it will transform this to diagonalized form what is a diagonalized form that is given here right basically we are transforming this covariance matrix in this shape so that minimal computation can give us the maximum results so only on the diagonal we will have the values and there would be zeros on the off diagonal elements 
for example uh, PCA will provide a mechanism to recognize this geometric similarity through algebraic means right so this what is the geometric similarity look at here here we have something which is known as principal component just look at this first we look at this we have these data points which are plotted in the plane xy plane and the covariance matrix of this data is given as 50 40 40 50 right and then we map it we project it right on x axis such that the values of the diagonal entries become maximized and values of off diagonal entries become minimized so we get this see here we get one and here we get one so in that case our computation would be faster and we will be mostly depending upon these two features not their correlations not their covariances right so try to understand this point pca is an unsupervised method which attempts to maximize the variance if given data samples x of d features is projected to a value w1 of k features and this projection produces most spread variance of the sample w1 is called the principal component first principal component basically look at this point again if we have a data set x that is of d dimension and let we have data set of d dimension and we transform it onto a data set of k dimension sum k dimension right using an eigenvector w1 right so it means that w1 is our principal component our first principal component right how that is done we will see later on as an example the difference between the sample points become the most apparent to maximize the variance why we need to maximize the variance because we want to differentiate the symbols or the data points clearly from each other that's why we maximize the variance for a unique solution and to make the direction the important factor we require w1 equal to 1 norm of vector this is the Euclidean norm that we have studied in the previous slides we try to make it equal to 1 right and it would give us remember what it says Euclidean norm mean that the distance of w1 would be 1 mean that it would be of one length unit vector we know that the normal distribution that we have studied in chapter 5 and in previous chapters z1 is given as this w1 tx with covariance equal to uh, summation and variance z1 is equal to w1 t uh, covariance matrix and w1 so all these three terms we have seen previously and we have studied what are these now we look at this figure here you can see that uh, we have already studied the iris flower data set which consists of four features sepal length sepal width petal length petal width right and the fifth one is their class right here this gives us the sepal length and the sepal length mean it gives us a variance between the first feature vector right which is given as for the first class it look like this for second class looks like this and for the third class looks like this right however if we take the covariance of sepal width and sepal length that if we draw them on our uh, graph that looks like this similarly we would see the uh, petal length and sepal width that is this and petal width and sepal length that is this now by looking at these figures we can see that we would try to choose the relationship that maximizes the variance or that maximizes the difference between three classes right which at one point seems this we can have the petal length and we will have 
the petal width relationship, it gives us the maximal distinction between the three classes, right? Whereas in other cases, you see that the maximal distinction here, it is a very good maximal distinction here as well, right? However, uh, in this figure, this class is more uh, scattered, it has little effect, right? What is that? We see uh, here in this figure. Let we have our covariance matrix given as 3, 2, 2, 3 with the help of this, right? Now, this data is present in two dimension. If this is present in two dimension, then we can look at either from this x-axis side, we can put our uh, microscope here to look at this data or we can put here to look at the data. If we look from this side on the data and that seems maximally separated from each other, we will say that our uh, one axis, for example, let for your understanding, this kind of uh, thing is the maximal uh, eigenvector because it gives us a view such that the point seems to be maximally separated from each other. However, if we look at from this point and we do not find the maximally separated, so we will say that this axis is not or this vector is not giving us the best separation of the data. Now, we look at from another point. If we look from this side, right, we see the, that data is maximally separated from each other because we have all this area, all this area, right, to visualize the data. So, from this point, we can see our data maximally separated from each other, Maxi is, its variance is maximum. But in contrast, if we look at from this side on our data, then we will see that our data is not maximally separated because now we have only this much space which is visible to our telescope, right? And we will see most of the points overlapping on each other. Their separations are not very much clear. It means that this axis is not giving us the maximal covariance, maximal variance and our vision is very much limited on this side. So, we will say that this side does not provide a very good separation between the data items. However, this side provides the very good separation between the data items, right? So, we would like to look from this side where we can see everything very much clearly separated from each other. Listen by this point again and try to understand it. Here we have this uh, pink eigenvector which has the value 5 and we have the green eigenvector which has the value 1. From here we can see that the eigenvector which is pink, it has the value maximum because it can give us a view of maximum area. So, this eigenvector or eigenvalue would correspond to the, this eigenvalue would correspond to the eigenvector which has maximum information for us, right? And the green has minimum information for us. So, we can uh, neglect it and we can keep it that is the idea behind the dimension reduction in PCA. Look at here that, again if we look from this side, right, we have a very good view of our data. But if we look from this side, from this side, we do not have a very good view of our data. So, we would prefer to the side which have the maximum value of our eigenvalue, that would be our preferred direction. So, keep these two points in your mind. First principle component, now we look at this and the same thing figure given over here. The eigenvectors of given data set are principal components. The eigenvectors that we will find, they will be known as the principal components. The problem, we seek W a vector such that variance of Z is maximized 
what does that mean we seek a vector some vector w because this line would be represented by a set of points so known as eigen vector so we seek w such that its variance is maximum because if the variance is maximum our view would be good and if we look from this side we will have maximum area and we can better see all the points subject to the constraint that w transpose w is equal to 1 l norm what does that mean it mean that the length of this should be the unit one right the length of w should be unit however variance is not zero or not one right try to clear this point in your mind the solution for the solution we have for this problem writing this as a lagrange problem we have now what's the lagrange problem i do not go into that we, you just assume that we write this expression as this right which expression this one right and we write it we expand it using the lagrange theorem as w transpose uh, sigma w is equal to alpha w transpose t w minus 1 that is equal to 0 right taking the derivative with respect to w right we get 2 sigma w minus 2 alpha w is equal to 0 now i do not go into the details at how the derivative has been taken you must take your copy pencil and drive this derivation over there you must be good enough to find the derivative and from here we can see that 2 omega w is equal to 2 alpha w 2 is cancelled with each other so omega w is equal to alpha w where alpha is the eigenvalue and omega is the eigenvector how is that if we have taken the derivative and we have compared we came up with this formula or this expression in this expression the sigma that is a matrix and alpha is a single or value single value whereas w is a vector so it means that it has become something eigenvalue eigenvectors that we have seen in the previous slides right we choose the eigenvector with the largest eigenvalue for the variance to be maximum we know that why we choose the eigenvector which has the maximum value because we want to have the maximum view of our data that is only from that size that side which has the maximum variance the principal component is the eigenvector of the covariance matrix of the input sample with the largest eigenvalue lambda 1 is equal to w the first principal component basically we may have multiple principal components right so first principal component would have would be the one which have the maximum eigenvalue the next maximum the next maximum eigenvalue would correspond to the second best principal component the third maximum value of alpha would correspond to the third best principal component and so on w is known as the first principal component let we call it as w1 the second principal component let w2 be the second principal component then it should maximize the variance however that should be less than the variance of uh, first principal component must be a unit length what does that mean it mean the same thing we have been talking about I mean w transpose w should be equal to 1 must be orthogonal to the w1 right previously we have seen that when we were looking at the ellipsoids each principal component is at the 90 degree angle from the other so that is orthogonal or perpendicular as a projection of z when we project these values and produce z is uncorrelated with wz1 right because w1 the principal first principal component and second principal component they both are independent from each other so they must be orthogonal to each other if they are not independent it, it means that they are correlating with each other right remember if one vector is in this direction this is one and another direction a vector is in the same direction they are very much correlated or we can say that they are 100 percent correlated with each other however as the direction of these vectors differ from each other 
their correlations become minimum and minimum and minimum and a vector which is perpendicular from the vector 1 let I call it as vector 2 they have no correlation and they are uncorrelated right. Even if some vectors tries to move in this direction it has some correlation I call it as vector 3 it has some correlation with vector 1 and if it becomes parallel to the vector 1 it has fully correlated with the vector 1. So, you must understand that understand the concept of correlation and uncorrelation. For the second principal component we have this equation max w2 w2 transpose this minus this minus this right what is this I am not going into this detail this is just taken from the book. So, and even it would uh, lengthen our uh, understanding of this uh, algorithm. So, we just skip over it and we take the derivative with respect to w2 we are left with this pre multiply by w1 transpose and we get we multiply with w1 transpose and we get this expression. This is the expression taken from the previous slide that was uh, basically uh, this one right we have copied this on the next slide and it has become an equation 16.1 16-1 dot product of two orthogonal vectors is 0 w1 transpose w2 that becomes 0 right. So, in that case right uh, all those which have the dot products with w1 and w2 they become 0 w1 w2 transpose is a scale this expression is scalar so equal to its transpose scalar can be is equal to its transpose as w1 is leading eigen vector of this because this is the first eigen vector called leading eigen vector and this is equal to this right this is the matrix summation is a matrix of covariances w1 is the uh, eigen vectors set of eigen vectors and lambda 1 w1 so this is eigen value and this is eigen vector therefore we can write it like this and this could be written as this right this is equal to its transpose being a scalar and that could be written as this lambda 1 w transpose if it would become a 0 so that all these terms are equal to 0 and this 2w1 transpose this right this becomes 0 this becomes 0 we are left with this term only right. So, we are left with this term right and from this term we have the constraint that this would be a unit vector mean equal to 1. So, we will have a beta which is equal to 0 and now equation 16.1 reduces beta is 0. So, this is crossed out we are left with these two 2 sigma 2 it becomes equal this uh, term becomes on this side of equation. So, it becomes equal to this which is further if we take out 2's it becomes this and if you look at this it is the equation of eigenvalue and eigenvectors where w2 is the eigenvector of uh, covariance matrix with eigenvalue alpha w2 is the second principal component of given data set. So, this was little bit derivation that how we can drive different eigenvalues and eigenvectors uh, from the given data set. Now, let me assume that if covariance matrix is symmetric with different values then eigenvectors are orthogonal right. It means that all the orthogonal uh, values r now this is our covariance matrix if it is symmetric with different values. So, all the values all the uh, entries in the covariance matrix its derivations would generate eigenvectors and they are orthogonal to each other mean or at the 90 degree angle. All eigenvalues are positive this we have already seen and if this is positive definite mean that every value in it is greater than 0 for all non null values of x. Take if this 
is positive or definite, then all eigenvalues would be positive. If our covariance matrix is singular, mean its uh, determinant would be 0, then its rank is k which is less than d, right? where we would be using the k eigenvectors and all of the eigenvalues greater than k, they would be 0. Right? So, all dimensions which are above than k, that would become 0 and there would be dimension reduction in our data set. The k eigenvectors with non-zero eigenvalues are the dimensions of the reduced space. Right? Remember this, we will explain it later on as well. The eigenvectors from 1 to k are arranged in descending order. First, principal component explains the largest variance. Second, principal component explains the second largest. So, this figure shows that the first principal component explain the largest variance on one side, next would explain the second largest, then third largest and so on. Right? Then we will decide some threshold that we want to keep for example, these five principal components mean that for each feature there would be a principal component. So, in this diagram we have 10 features, we have 10 principal components and then we will decide the threshold that below this threshold we will discard all those principal components mean all those features which are having less value as compared to the threshold and we will keep only this data, these features from these features we can get the maximum information, we can look into the data maximally and rest of the features are dropped, dimension is reduced. Let w is equal to w, z is equal to w transpose x minus m, right. It is the same that we have already seen this uh, equation. However, the mean is subtracted here as well. Additionally, s is the estimator, the sample variance is the estimator to covariance matrix and k columns of w are the k leading eigenvectors of S, right. Subtract the sample mean m from x before projection to the center of the data on the origin, right. This is a kind of linear transformation or projection we can say that this linear transformation gives k dimensional space with the dimensions given by the eigenvector, right. Whatever we have produced from the previous sets that is S and from this S we will keep k columns right and then we will normalize those k columns, we will subtract the sample mean from all those k columns and this linear transformation would give us k dimensional data which is a reduced dimension. Variance over these new dimensions are equal to the eigenvalues of course, to normalize variances divide them by the square root of the eigenvalues. Right. We will have to perform these steps as well. Now, we look at some PCA example. Let there is a class of students with grades on 5 courses. Let we want to order them according to the courses. Right. It is projection of data onto one dimension such that the difference between the data becomes more apparent. Right. We have the 5 values, we have the values on 5 courses it is basically two dimension data and we want to project it on a one line mean that on one dimension. The eigenvector with the highest eigenvalue is, is in the direction that has the highest variance, right. And we know that previously this dimension was high. So, the first com uh, component eigenvector would be this dimension as we have visualized in the previous slides. Eigenvalues have little contribution to variance and may be discarded. Right? Those eigenvalues which have little contribution, we discard them. Practically, we use k leading components that explains more than 90 percent of the variance right? and the proportion of the variance explained by k principal components is given with the help of this formula. Right? Here we can see that lambda 1, it is the eigenvalue of first principal component, eigenvalue of second principal component and so on up to eigenvalue of k principal component. And similarly, we will have 
we will divide it with the eigenvalues of all the principal components. It would give us the proportion of variance explained by this. Highly correlated dimensions are normally neglected. Right? There would be small eigenvectors with large eigenvalues. This is interesting. Right? Highly correlated dimension would have small values. K will be much smaller than D, a lot of dimensional reduction. If K is, for example, there are 100 dimensions in our data, that is D, and we find 20 dimensions useful and we discard other, so K is much smaller than D or there is a lot of dimensional reduction. Image and speech data usually shows this correlation and all those correlated features are discarded basically. They are very good candidates for filtering out, to be filtered out. PCA will only be effective if there is correlation among data features. Of course, because if there is correlation among data features, so we can discard them and if there is no feature which shows a correlation with any other feature, then PCA would have no effect on our data it would not reduce the dimensions of our data. Selecting the eigenvectors, right? How we select the eigenvectors? We use a scree graph for this purpose. It is a plot of variances explained as a function of number of eigenvectors kept, right? For ex and visual analysis of this can help us to have a k values. For example, we can have, look at this, we use all of the features, uh, right? As we go on, we take more and more features, right? The eigenvalues become smaller and smaller. First principal component would have the highest value, and of course, first principal component would correspond to some feature of our data. So, we can say that that feature would have the maximum eigenvalue, and that would explain our variance a lot. The next feature would explain a li little than this, then there is the next feature which is represented by the third principal component, fourth principal component would represent a fourth feature and so on. So, in this way by making this scree graph we can see that we will uh, what feature should be kept. Normally we use the 90 percent value if that comes over here we will keep these features and we will discard these features. Right? And even we can have proof of variance and eigenvectors, so we can uh, probability of variance basically. So, using the uh, CDA, uh, CDF graph, so we can also find that uh, if the 90 percent thing is explained over here, so we will keep it and we will leave the rest of the things. Selecting the eigenvectors, we filter out the eigenvectors whose eigenvalues are less than average input variance. This is one of the features. Either we take the 90 percent confidence interval, uh, threshold interval or we take the average input variance. Right? The given that if we have this equation equal to the trace of S or given as TRS, the average eigen value is equal to the average input variance. It means that this point actually says that we have find out all the eigen values. So, we take the average eigen value and we keep all those eigen values which are equal or greater than our mean and we filter out all those which are smaller than our mean eigen value. It will give us uh, average variance. To keep eigen vectors with the variance higher than average input variance, keep eigen vectors with this, this the same thing that I have told. If the variance of original dimension change considerably, they affect the direction of the principal component more than correlation. Of course, correlation have little effect on our principal component, this we have seen previously. However, the covariance has high effect. There is two solutions, normalize the data with zero mean and unit variance. It is a better thing that you always normalize the data. Use the eigenvectors of the correlation matrix R instead of the covariance matrix S. Right? So, this is some important point I am not going to explain, try to understand it yourself for the correlations to be effective and not the individual variances. Right? So, these three points I leave it for your own uh, discussion and deliberation. Robust estimation methods, 
right we have PCA explain variance and is sensitive to outliers right of course if we have the data something like here 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 and any value present here one value would reduce our uh, would increase the variance so outliers have a drastic drastic effect on PCA computation a few outliers will have large effect on the variances resulting same effect on eigenvectors mean eigenvectors would also become larger so robust estimation methods allow calculating parameters in the presence of outliers calculate the mahalanobis distance of the data points and discard the distance points distant point what does that mean it mean that uh, find the mahalanobis distances of each point and if one or few point which have the highest distance discard them because they are the outliers and they will, they will just uh, disturb our data set. Selecting the eigenvector, the visual analysis. We plot the data in 2D space and search visually for the patterns like structures, group outliers, normality and so forth. For example, here we have the data. So, we can see that uh, this dimension gives us the maximum view or this dimension gives us the maximum view or this dimension gives us the maximum view. So, we will look at every dimension and the dimension that would give us the maximum view that would be find out as the eigenvectors. So, in this case we have two dimensions first eigenvector goes in this way horizontally and other is in the vertical dimension. Meaningful information can be expressed by looking at the dimensions of the principal components for image data eigenvectors can be represented as images known as eigenfaces or eigen digits. So, what does this slide says? This slide says that by drawing, by plotting the data, we can get a lot of information about the eigenvectors. We can estimate in which direction there would be the maximum uh, eigenvector and in which direction there would be the minimum variance. So, minimum eigenvector would be in that direction. If we are using image data, so and finding their eigenvectors, they would also be form some image and that image is known as eigen faces or eigen digits. Reconstruction of error. If x is d dimensional normality or d dimension data normally distributed data then projected k dimensions would also be normal right. If the previous data is normally distributed the reduced dimension data would all then would be also normally distributed. As all this z j W j transpose x j are uncorrelated then new covariance matrices will be diagonal. This is very interesting because there would be covariances among uh, the same uh, uh, features right. Uh, there would be little uh, similarity with the other features. New covariance matrix uh, matrices will be diagonal and we have seen this example that it would have some value here and of diagonal values will be 0 and this is here right and so on. And if they are normalized to have a unit variance Euclidean distances can be used in this new space leading to simple classifier. What does that mean? It means that we should always normalize the data because simpler formulas can find the distances instead of uh, some Malanobis distance which is a complex formula. If z t w t x t is projected to this space right because it has the values have been changed right using this formula such that w w transpose is equal to i mean that w is orthogonal matrix the back propagation could be given as x minus mu right is equal to w z t. If we look at this we take this on this side w z t that is equal to x t minus x right or we can solve it like this we multiply it with w and we also multiply this side with w so w w t that is equal to i the unit vector so here it would become i right which we can ignore easily so w z t w z t is becomes equal to x t minus mu where we let consider that this x would be would be our estimate. Then we can rearrange this equation as x the estimate that we want for our original data 
from the reduced data, reduced dimensional data that could be given with the help of this formula. This may have been moved to the side and this, right. So, using this formula, we can construct the original data. However, the original data would have some error. During dimensional reduction, we have reduced, we have excluded some features. So, this estimate would not be perfect and it would include some error. Some eigenvectors are dropped. Therefore, the reconstruction process will contain error known as reconstruction error and is given by this formula, right. The difference between the original value of x and its estimation that is taken as square and summed up for all the instances, it would give us reconstruction error, right. That is all about for the uh, principal component analysis. The lecture is over, the things and the concepts are given to you. However, here uh, I have worked it out and I have implemented all those concepts which we have studied in the principal component analysis and I have written the program for that. I would make this program available for you people and then it would be your responsibility to look at each and every slide of the lecture and see that how it is implemented. The few, few of the concepts which have been presented in the last like uh, reconstruction error etc are not discussed, are not coded here that I expect from you people to do the programming yourself. I will make few of, there are three uh, programs written in Python for your understanding. So, you would study them, understand them and then you will try to see that how they are mapped with the concepts given in the lecture. Right. So, you will implement them and as an exercise you will submit that to me. Right. That is all about for today. I hope things are clear to you. Allah Hafiz.